one. Bicep workout. <laughs> Barbecue. Just the word alone conjures up images of succulent meat slow roasting over amber flames. Just enough to take the edge off. I'll take about a bucket of these. Though Long Island isn't anywhere near the Southern Barbecue Belt, we're home to some serious pit masters. My oh, beautiful oh. mother. <laughs> can't see and I can't talk. This episode of Feed Me TV is all about the newest additions to our barbecue community. Let's get fired up about barbecue. Is this all for me? You can get it, yes. It'll be delish. traditional barbecue belt begins east in the Carolinas, expanding out to Texas in the west. In the north, Kansas City, Missouri is king. Then the barbecue map stretches downward towards the deep south. So how did this celebrated way of cooking make it to our area? Long Island barbecue began in 1995 when Turtle Crossing in the Hamptons first opened its doors. This was serious smoked meat paired with plentiful, tasty sides that Hamptons diners couldn't get enough of. Long Island's forefather of barbecue is Al Horowitz, whose first Smokin' Al's opened in Bay Shore in 2003. A second Smokin' Al's opened in Massapequa Park just five years later, in the middle of what we could call the first Long Island barbecue boom. Of the barbecue joints that opened between 2006 and 2009, Barbecue, Townline, and Dixie Smokehouse, among many others, are still serving. Of the more than two dozen barbecue joints open today on Long Island, almost half of them began serving in the last few years. One of the more recent openings is Rolling Smoke in Ronkonkoma. Owners Richard and Carrie Ciota started their business after a long and successful career in roofing. Rich wanted to indulge his interest in cooking and step away from a physically demanding job. Now when you head to Rolling Smoke, be sure to try their sides along with your meat. But I think their can't miss barbecue meal is their giant ribs. All right, this okay. is the dinosaur rib. Now describe to me what we're looking at here. These are a three bone plate on the, from the cow. Uh, they're beef ribs, obviously. <laughs> they're USDA uh, choice oh, meats. Bicep worked out here. They're heavy. Okay. We want to make a glue yep. for the dry rub to okay. stick to. All right? And we'll rub that in. Yeah. The second layer of flavor is going to be the salt. Okay. Then you the pepper. We then do our garlic and our onion. So that's, now that's it. Those are cool. That looks done. pretty even. Yeah, looks perfect. more even than yours, you I would say. Job than I did. <laughs> Now it's time to head to the truck that houses his custom-built smoker. After five hours of low-temperature cooking, we pull out the ribs to give it a quick beer bath. Look at that. So now what happens is we take both these ribs, and then we just pour a little bit over each one. Mm -hmm. I like your little bit, Rich. Yeah. Oh, nice <laughs> one full <laughs> bottle is just a just just of beer. enough to take the edge off. <laughs> and then it goes back in. OK. Right? back into the smoker for a few more hours of cooking. While we waited, Rich told me how he met his business partner and love of his life, Carrie. You guys, we fell in love like right away. Yeah, we did, as a matter of fact. She was sitting there with her legs crossed on a bar stool, little white blouse off her shoulders. I love so much how you remember all the details of what she was wearing and everything. Absolutely, and it was, we spent the night together talking and drinking and uh, laughing and getting to know each other. And at the end of that night, I knew in my heart that uh, she was the woman for me forever. So you guys have this business. Mm -hmm. When did you decide that now you're gonna do barbecue? I started to initially work from a uh, gas grill, okay. probably where most smokers start out. 
Finally, I bought a couple of different smokers and I kept working it over time. So I smoked probably for about 10 years prior to going into the food truck, which grew into the idea of a small restaurant. I see. It was a labor of love, you know, we wanted it to be warm and rustic and, uh, and comfortable. Rich and Carey's son Adam is a CIA graduate, the Culinary Institute of America, that is, and he's created all of the sides recipes at Rolling Smoke. Sides are super important to a killer barbecue meal. You got some sides going. I'll be your sidekick today. Sounds good. But we're gonna make the cornbread, which is very special here. It's your recipe, yep. just like all the other sides. Yep. What goes into this? So basically we start with the corn. It's almost equal parts corn and butter. After the corn is brown, okay. what we're gonna do next is blend all this with our cream okay. and our eggs. Cream and milk. That looks really, really nice. And then this is our mix that we make. It's basically cake flour, cornmeal, baking powder, baking soda. So we've combined all that corn. We're gonna put it into your mix, yep. the dry and the wet all together. Yeah, start folding. I've taken over, I've moved in. Yeah. I'll be your apprentice, chef. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, I don't, I don't like doing meal. this part. We're gonna use those mini loaf pans in yeah. a second. So we need 350 grams okay. of... 350? Yep, 350. Thing, I'll get that. Oh no! <laughs> I'm fired! <It> <laughs> now I've gone over. <laughs> I've, I've messed up the sides. I've gone At the end of the day, a gram here, a gram there isn't, isn't the end of the world. Why don't we see you do one of the perfect ones since yeah. I've messed this one up? Cool. Should I try to nail it, see if I can get... I think you went over. Really? Yeah, I do. Right, I think I did it. Oh, you, you just <laughs> went over me. I went over you. That's way over me. How dare you? I'm going to test you one more. Okay. That cool. went way over. Yeah. <laughs> I've done this roughly 200 times. Uh, I don't know if I would put that extra scoop in there. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I think I did 376 again. You did? Well, yeah. hey, I guess the, the bottom is line is we want to give the diner more than we're, what we... Yeah, we got to be generous. Of. We're going to bake all of these for about an hour. And finally, it's ready to serve. The cornbread is mouth-watering, but now that the diner rib is ready, I couldn't wait to sink my teeth into it. Okay, here we go. Look at that. This says it all. It's delicious. What a blast hanging with the Rolling Smoke family all day. Smokehouse owner Manny Vumvarakis opened his Q restaurant in Garden City. He's proud to have his mother working there, helping to prepare and season the meats. It's a great spot to hang at the bar and to get a quick barbecue lunch. There's even a salad line where you can pick and choose from countless toppings. This is something I'm familiar with. This sauce, the kochujang sauce, is very Korean. It's something that I have in my house all the time. It's tangy and sweet. Right, when I was coming up with the menu, I wanted to kind of make it uh, multicultural. So uh, we take the wings and we um, make a Korean barbecue sauce, which has a gochujang base. These are smoked. A lot of beautiful proteins are smoked. I want to see your smoker action. Mm -hmm. You should step back here. Most everything on their varied menu is smoked, from the baby back ribs, the porchetta, their Brussels sprouts, and many flavors of wings. Now, see, I, I like that you're doing a turkey breast here, because that's something unusual to me. Why turkey? Our menu has a lot of healthy offerings. Yeah. So, you know, one of our taglines is, you know, uh, wholesome comfort food, cook low and slow. <laughs> you say it and you're like, I don't really well, know that Well, people think means. barbecue is always going to be just laden with sauces and lots of calories, but yeah. why can't you get a salad with some smoked turkey and some, you know, smoked Brussels and some other toppings. Right. I feel like you had barbecue, but you ate healthy. I decided to exercise that healthier option. Uh, you try some of your hummus. It'll be delicious. By walking the line and ordering my bespoke brisket lunch. Okay, so I've got my meal. I went through the line. I got my salad bowl with that lovely brisket on top. This is my smoked turkey with my sides. But you know I've got to try the wings. It's got that Korean gochujang sauce. This is the test right here. Oh, that is good. I taste that little piquant gochujang sauce. Nice and sweet. I'll take about a bucket of these. 
Lorenzo Vargas helms Smoked Barn in Levittown. His South American background influences many of the eatery's popular dishes, which include a customizable board of smoked meats and sides. It's the perfect spread for a family. You have an interesting background. Tell me about your cooking background. I'm coming from Peru. Uh, my dad, he used to make a different Peruvian barbecues mm -hmm. under the ground. Uh, caja china, uh -huh. different kind of oven. What is caja china? Caja china is where you put the pig in like a box right. with the charcoal in the top. So tell me about this board. Is this for one portion? Is this all for me? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you can eat it, yes. It's like a family style. We got brisket right here, yep. pork belly, mm -hmm. the beef short rib, the pulled pork, and the pork ribs. What's unique about Renzo's spice mix is that he uses coffee to season the meats. But besides barbecue, Renzo cooks some of his native country's better known dishes, like the lomo saltado, a sliced beef entree that's sauteed in a wok. The typical lomo saltado is made with a very lean kind of meat, With right? filet. Yeah, yes. so we're gonna zhuzh it up, make it a lot more decadent. Shin better. With some short with rib, beef which of short course. Ribs. So we've got that nice, Short rib, nice and marble, nice and fatty. Now we're going to add this, garlic. which is a very Peruvian. It's garlic with a little jalapeno. Yes. We're just gonna rub it on yes, the short bit. rib. And it's ready. So we're gonna quick fry it. That's gonna ready. Get ready out there. Oh yeah. Woo! Take this off. There's more action. We add some red onion, some tomato, scallion, sesame oil, soy sauce. Soy sauce. Smells good. What? It smells really good. A little bit of vinegar. Vinegar. Woo! If that didn't smell so good, I'd get out of the kitchen. Can't see and I can't talk, but it better taste good. <laughs> Now it's ready. Okay, let's plate it. We plated our dish, but not before Renzo insisted on showing me one last Peruvian favorite, the pollo a la brasa, aka rotisserie chicken. I see you butterflied it. You spread its, its uh, wings open because actually it is the best way to get an even cook. Yes. And if you separate the chicken for you guys that like to make chicken at home and season in here, it also makes a crispier uh, chicken skin. skin. And of course you get the flavoring inside. So we're gonna put it on this torture device. Ow! Okay, good. That's tight. Oh, we gotta make sure that thing doesn't move because it's gonna twirl around that stick for how many hours? Uh, hour and a half. Okay. And you put the seasonings and everything and you let it marinate for how long? For a day. A day. Now into the rotisserie. What a feast. Thank goodness Renzo was hungry too. Gracias. Ooh, that sauce is really good. That's got some kick to it. Mm hmm. Delicious. We're experts on pizza and pasta and can spot a proper bagel from a basket of imposters. But barbecue is a relative newbie to our Long Island dining scene. Now though, whatever the style, whatever the cut, you can satisfy all of your barbecue cravings right here on the island. Our love affair with smoking meat low and slow continues to define American cuisine. <laughs>